down here with Lee Holdsworth. Lee, uh, front row of the grid, uh, eighth in the championship, last race for Holden, mate. I guess everything's on the line for you, mate. It's do or die. Yeah, exactly. It's not a bad spot to start from. I'm getting used to this spot with no one ahead of me on the grid, but, um, yeah, it's a, a great spot to start from. And if I can get to the first corner first, um, you know, that's half the job done because it's very hard to, to pass around this, uh, this joint and uh, it's going to be a hard, hot race. So, you know, uh, the start's so important. All right, mate, it'd be great to see you have a really good last run in the Holden. Lee, good luck. Thank you. Lee Holdsworth with a bird's eye view down the front straight and down is the way it goes. Big drop in the elevation down to turn one. It's a wide, such a wide part of the circuit. In fact, the only wide part of the circuit because it narrows up pretty quickly. He's going to make a good point in the break before, though, Matt, that uh, this is uh, one of the few tracks. One minute signal. One minute signal. Tim Schenken, race director on the radio. One of the tracks where, because of the downhill nature, you've really got to manage the start so so carefully. You know, if you get that wrong here, you can just blow apart your race before it even gets start started. And it doesn't really show it there, but that, that, as you can see, that is really downhill on Australia Avenue down to turn one. So very easy for the car to creep before the start. And this is, in terms of tension, as high as it gets for two guys. Wink up right there and back three rows is his teammate Craig Lowndes on 10th position. And for these guys, it's all about the championship. These shots give you a bit of an overview of the precinct here. You know, remember that this was all built for the year 2000 Olympics held in Sydney. We are west of Sydney Harbour and right smack bang in the middle of a $1 billion plus sporting precinct where so much has gone on over the last decade or so in sport and entertainment. Now we're only moments away from getting some answers to the next part of the puzzle in determining the championship in 2011. So attack the start of that formation like you think they were starting the race. <laughs> so there's Winker, 188 points. Basically top four for him is what he needs to focus on. The difficult thing will be where he's starting from. Fifth position as we run you through this Fuso starting grid at the front. Will Davison, third pole position of the year. Lee Holdsworth off to Stone Brothers Racing next year. Continues a 100% front row qualifying run here at Sydney Olympic Park. Mark Winterbottom and Shane Van Gisberg at positions three and four. There is Wing Cup, position five. He's got Jonathan Webb, winner here last year, next to him. Behind them, Tim Slade, Lucky Seven Racing, and Rick Kelly, three wins for the season. Michael Caruso with Craig Lowndes, the only other man who can take the title away from Wing Cup this weekend. Garth Tander, three wins for the year, alongside Tony Dalberto. James Courtney will have to tear that number one off the side of his car by the end of this weekend. The question is, who will stick it on for 2012? Todd Kelly and Greg Murphy has re-signed for another crack with the Pepsi Max crew for 2012. Paul Dumbrell is farewelling full-time racing at the end of tomorrow afternoon. West Track Racing's Dean Fiore next to him. There's Stephen Johnson had a tummy bug this week, so it's going to be a, a tough run for him today. Fabian Coulthard on the move as well to Bradley Jones Racing. Warren Luff has decided to part ways with Lucas Dumbrell Racing and Gulf Western Oil and David Reynolds as part of Stratco Racing in the second last row of the grid and Alex Davison and Carl Ryan will make up the rear so 28 starters 74 laps 250 k's James Courtney on board with him working hard against the brake using his left foot and uh, cycling a lot of load through those front tyres this is Paul Dumbrell Bottolo Racing you mentioned Matt, last full-time gig for him this weekend. He will come back in a part-time role in V8 Supercar Racing. This is on board with James Moffat. Son of Australian touring car legend Alan Moffat. And uh, we've seen some terrific drives from him so far this year, notably on the Gold Coast most recently. Don't forget, if you are out and about, you have to leave the lounge room. If you want to keep up with all that's going on, the Sevens coverage of the V8 Supercars, you can check it out to Big Pond Sport on your Telstra Next G mobile. This is Mark Dutton. Hey, really quite surprised. You're just having a last opportunity to talk to a few team managers. I think we're going to see a few more cars than we thought try this on for two stops in this race. Now, remember, to make this on two fuel stops, you're going to need seven safety cars to make it home. This is going to be a fascinating race at the other end. Speed versus strategy. 
So as the rear of the grid comes into position, the focus back down the front is quite fascinating. Will Davison on the right-hand side of your screen, pole position, Lee Holdsworth next to him. Two rows back, our championship contender of Jamie Wincup, and then a few more rows back on the left-hand side of our screen will be Craig Lowndes. Now, this is a plan. Uh, spoke to them at Brad Jones Racing. They're always planning to run right out of the pit lane exit for the start of the race. And this could be the race that decides our champion for 2011. Two young guns at the front. Watch for the Vodafone cars. Everybody's just taking it evenly. Lee Holdsworth pulling up alongside Will Davison down to turn one, who keeps the advantage. Wind Cup gets through cleanly. Lowndes has hung out a bit wide, but he also gets the return one. That's pretty tight. Now the ball tightens up down at two, three, four. Big lock oh. here for Will on the inside front. Cole ties. He went straight ahead. He went straight ahead through two. Nose to tail contact. Jonathan Webb was involved in that. And so was Craig Lowndes. There was definitely contact in between Tanda and Lowndes. About five cars are showing yellow on our computer as having gone straight through that chicane. And this man at the front of the queue was the first to do that. Locked up, put the stop on down the inside and a position. How's that for a move? First lap, he's taken on Shane Van Gisberg. He's going to lose. He's going to come back and have another crack at him down to turn nine. So Wincup has decided I'm going to cut loose early and a big lock up there on the way through to turn nine. So once Jamie dive bombed him down the inside at eight, it made the corner exit slow. So that allowed Shane to come back down the inside. Then there's a big bugger under brakes for Wind Cup. He can't afford to put a mark on that tyre set. Risky play on lap one. That's all the ball, and he got it. Jonathan Webb got it. Here we go. This is Wind Cup down the inside. Van Gisbergen. Threshold of breaking, and they both just make it. In fact, Van Gisbergen looked like he was going to run wide. So, right at the edge of disaster in turn one, he's trying to get a wind cut driving shallow down. They're trying to get under Van Gisbergen as he exposes himself to a slow exit off one, and then Rick Kelly will have a bite at him on the run up to two. So, when you're shallow on the entry, you're slow on the exit. Only meets needs to be a couple of kilometres an hour and it can change positions quickly at the end of the next straight. And remember this, Wing Cup's looking for a top four finish. He's decided to go for a top four spot on the first lap. So he's currently fifth. There's Will Davison. There's Lee Holdsworth. Then we've got Mark Winterbottom. Shane Van Gisbergen and then Wing Cup. to Don Fraser Avenue and Holdsworth puts pressure on Davison. Did you see how wide Jonathan Webb was through turn five? He almost gave the fence a hit when we saw all those accidents last year. And he did rub the wall on the exit before on the previous one that uh, was at the exit of 13. Yeah. Well, Davison, you know what he made a mistake at the first chicane on the opening lap? All what he's never was about whether he should have then conceded that spot to Holdsworth because he actually went off the road. Great shot at the speed coming down the front straight. 250 kilometres on approach down to turn one. By the way, Craig Lowndes has dropped the position. Now Tander has got past him, so Lowndes goes back to 11. Tander up to 10. Let's ride with Winka. This is the run to turn two. It's going to be very hard to do anything about getting up the inside there because it narrows up big time. Then it's this blind left-hander at five. So he's right under the rear wing of Shane's car at the moment. And his best bet might be if he can get the right positioning here down the inside of turn nine if he's got more car speed. He won't get it done here at eight. He's very shallow on the entry again into eight. It's a different style of approach between the two drivers. He's not close enough to have a lunch down here. Telegraphing, though, isn't he? He's letting Van Gisbergen know that he's there. He's already pulled up alongside him once. And great resolve from the young Kiwi to fight straight back. 
remember Shane Van Gisbergen was in the hunt to win here last year, ran out of fuel in the dying stages. How's the way that they can attack the curb in the Vodafone car at 11 then? We cut the whole thing up on the curve big time. Conference going on down there at Team Vodafone. Let's focus on Wink Cup here because he's looking all around the back of the SP Tools. Ford on the run into one. Fastest man on the racetrack is Winterbottom on a 29.7. Will Davison, Lee Holdsworth, Mark Winterbottom, Shane Van Gisbergen, and pressure being applied by Wing Cup. They start to move around on the road together. Rick Kelly, Tim Slade, Michael Caruso, John Webb, and Garth Kane. And now Wing Cup's closer. So difficult though to be able to put a move on through this part of the racetrack. He doesn't have a lot of help around him, Wing Cup. He's got three Fords in front of him, one hold, and the bloke in the hold is going to Ford next year. <laughs> So Winkup trying very hard behind Van Giersbergen. Will Davison just reported back to the team he thinks he's bent the steering, so we should see how that car goes. Very equal start here between Holdsworth and Davison. In fact, Holdsworth moves straight across, but the next part of the start, you see the acceleration of the FPR car stays down the inside of the Gary Rogers Commodore. Nice job by Mark Winterbottom, gave everybody room. Everyone was pretty sanitised there, other than Craig Lowndes, who was too wide. This is on board now with Will Davison. He gets down the inside, a lot of room in behind, and that's the room that I mentioned there, that the room was very gentlemanly to allow Lee Holdsworth back into the slot and not get caught too wide. That was Rick Kelly just brushing up against that wall there on the exit of 13. lap of the race just done by Will Davison. In fact, a race lap record time of 129.076. So the Fords leading the way here as Jamie Winkup continues to probe and search as he closes in on this championship. Back at the Sydney Telstra 500 and Paul Dumbrell has come straight into the garage for some running repairs. So car 55 on lap six in pit lane. So the wheel's bent also, so it's got a steering arm problem or a front suspension problem and the wheel's bent. That's James Small talking to Paul Dumbrell. James' dad, Les Small, used to build cars for Alan Grice back in Tirana and 
Commodore days and the quite a famous family Australian motor racing. Guys, Will Davison has reported to team boss Tim Edwards that he has bent the steering and his tweaked. It doesn't feel right, but they're not going to bring him in and they're not going to change their strategy because he's still the fastest driver on the circuit. All right, so some tweaking all around there. Good news for Jamie Winkup, on the other hand, is that he's been reporting um, that his car's absolutely brilliant. So Davison leads the race. He's got 1.2 seconds over Lee Holdsworth. Winterbottom's had a steady as she goes affair since the start. Shane Van Gisberg is fourth. Jamie Winkup is fifth. But it's Rick Kelly, Tim Slade, Michael Russo, John O. Webb, Garth Tander, and then Craig Lowndes. Terrific sight here. Venue of the 2000 Sydney Olympics, there's a Novotel. This is uh, turn nine, around the big train station onto turn 10. That's a train station there in the foreground. And uh, 11, 12 rapidly becomes 13, and you're off again. That's the grassy knoll. Not far from where we are at the moment, that left side of JFK. So uh, off turn 13, you're talking about uh, James Small before and his dad, Les. His dad's actually down at Lucas Dumbrell Racing this weekend. A few changes coming up there in 2012. Les's team managing there. And uh, as Matty said earlier, Warren Luff's on the move for next year. So that margin that you can see there from the chopper from first to second on the computer, that's officially 1.17 seconds at the moment. There's Olympic Boulevard. A lot of you will know that. That's Merchandise Alley this weekend. Way up towards uh, the dome, which is uh, where there's some great muscle cars, actually, Batman cars up there. Yes. So, so there's lots to see and do here at uh, Sydney Olympic Park. Got Dumbrell's problem resolved, we've got him back out. Escape was down in the Batmobile earlier on before making all the sounds, and he's got a strange cape on. Well, he is the commissioner. So here we are, turns uh, six and seven, and uh, the scene of the crowd for many the incidents that have happened here in the last couple of years. It's got strangely silent, hasn't it? That's good, isn't it? That's good, isn't it? <laughs> then there was peace. <laughs> Took till December. Here's Rick Kelly, Tim Slade. They're all a bit of a waiting game at the moment. The reason they're frantic in those opening couple of laps is they're trying to make an advantage while they can before things normalise, which they have now done. And Lowndes, we find him in 11th position at this point. His teammate, Jamie Wincup, is fifth. He's got a whole HRT combination in front and behind. So Garth got around him on the opening laps and James Courtney is tucked in behind him. You mentioned Rick Kelly, who's a couple of spots further up. He's tucked in behind uh, Wind Cup in sixth position. And Craig got caught ready at the first corner. He fired down the outside of everybody. Yeah. And in terms of track position, he ended up three wide and he lost two spots. So that's where Tander was able to capitalise. Guys, Casey Stoner down here in the team Vodafone garage. And Casey, we haven't seen you since you won the World Championship MotoGP, mate. Congratulations. Uh, it's been a fantastic season for us and, uh, you know, what a better way to come and uh, watch a V8 race and relax during, the, during our off-season. Now, your passion for V8s in this team is quite incredible. Adrian Burgess is telling me earlier, they're going through the data trying to rem remember particular races and you tell them, no, that was at Darwin race two. <laughs> yeah, I've, uh, I've got the complete, you know, last two seasons on my, uh, on my laptop. I finally found out how to watch them uh, while I'm overseas. And, and uh, yeah, so they're, they're quite fresh in my memory. And, and uh, yeah, I knew a little bit more than what they did in a couple of things. Now, this is quite a friendship, quite a bond building between you and Team Vodafone. Potentially, one day, will we see you in a V8 supercar? That's what the plan is in the, in the future, you know, in the, in the distant future for now. Um, you know, it's something I've always dreamt of doing since I was very young. But uh, whether I've got enough to, to make it in this sport is, is something else. So we'll have to uh, wait and see and actually have a go in these and, uh, and see what we can do. They're pretty confident you'll be all right, Casey. All the very best, mate. Well done this year. Enjoy your break. Yeah, a bit more confident than me, but thank you. <laughs> I don't know. Some, the way some of those guys attack the uh, qualifying lap on two wheels, Casey wouldn't have looked out of place. That's right. So the fastest lap of the race now belongs to Jamie Winkup in fifth spot. I mentioned Rick Kelly for a reason who's tucked in behind him. He's gone up two since the start and looks good. Will Davison has reported that he's struggling a little bit out there and it's showing now because Lee Holdsworth is getting in position to make an attack. And the reason that uh, Will's struggling is you've already reported this. There you go, that's the voice of Will Davison. I just heard him say a few moments ago it's all over the place and you just heard him say it's getting worse. So that paints the story. 
So he's struggling. He's going to be eaten alive here in a moment by Lee Holdsworth. And probably Winterbottom, who's had the run of the race at the moment, tucked in in third. Track position is what Wing Cup has been looking for. He's more than happy with his car. He just can't get around that blue mobile in front of him. And this is as a result of the heavy contact with the curb on lap one at turn two. He hit it awkwardly and then smashed over oh. the curb at three. Here we go down the inside and Holdsworth for the lead at turn nine. Good pass. Winterbottom, oh, and a man now. here for Wind Cup. He's done it, or has he? No, Van Gisbergen gets back on the inside. How's that one? Blindsided all of us. Definite contact, I reckon. So Winterbottom drops to third. New race leader Lee Holdsworth. Mark Winterbottom, P2. Will Davison, in a matter of a couple of quarters, drops from one to three. And Wind Cup and Van Gisbergen swapping paint, and that allows Rick Kelly to buy in. So look out for the Jack Daniels car, winner at the last event at Sandown in the wet. And the margin from first to sixth, Rick Kelly, is just a little over three seconds at the moment. Will Davison saying, this is dangerous. The engineers are saying, drive it to the safety car. Now, to me, if the driver says that it's time for you to bring it in and have a look at the front suspension, that's the day you bring it in and have a look at the front suspension. Well, here. Escapee, there was quite a bit of panic down here in their pit bunker. They cleared the pit bunker to get it ready for them. I noticed you've got steering arms laid out here on the bench, so clearly that's what they were going to do. Now, Paul Dumbrell, he was in for the same thing. They think it might be because he's belting the tyres. He's been his steering arms. But all those green overalls that jumped under the car, one of those was Janelle Navarro. We've talked about it before, female. And remember, Amber Anderson and is driving a safety car, so it's just great. The chicks in pit lane are having a big influence. Outstanding. Well, I reckon Rick Kelly may have an influence here on Jamie Wincup, although Wincup has just managed to pull away a bit. So there goes Holdsworth. There's Winterbottom. There's a man who's an absolute target right now, Will Davison. And look at these three. Van Gisberg and Wincup and Rick Kelly. Ready to pounce. This could heat up, man, because... He is, he's gone, Will Davison's gone. The pressure that Van Giersbergen will put on, you see the, the gap that Wing Cup has made on Van Giersbergen in that one lap. Yeah. When he had a dive, he's four or five car lengths. So when Van Giersbergen gets down the inside of Davison, Wing Cup will be there. This is, that, super dangerous, super bend is exactly what Will Davison just said to the crew. And the reason why Van Giersbergen so... Oh, bang! There you go, super Very dangerous, broke, super bad. Just bring the car in and it doesn't do that. Copy that, I see that. Be careful reversing out. Do your best to drive it around if you can, as well as possible. So the trading post Falcon into the wall. Our pole sitter had been telling him the steering was broken. They wouldn't bring it in. It gets down to the end of a turn of 250 k's down to 85, and that's what happens when it breaks completely. Watch this. Straight ahead, into the rubber, whack! And Matt, if that happens at turn five, that car goes in the fence at 200 kilometres an hour. You just can't do that stuff. The driver says it's dangerous, park it. Head a safety car will be called into action. You said it earlier, it's 100% strike rate here in every race. It's guaranteed that the safety car is going to come out sooner or later, so lap 10, it's called into duty. Of course, what they were trying to do in training post racing is get the car all the uh, strange because the really safety car boards out. So I was wondering why Jamie was looking down the inside there. Oh, they're in. Okay. So they're using this opportunity. So slow to take the opportunity to shift the strategy. I've got permission to drive through the DJR garage here, mate. You're going to drive through the DJR garage. Uh, GRM are set up us nicely in. So the real strategy now is being applied. Anyone that stays out of the pit lane right now is on a two-stopper. This now is the start of a three-stop strategy for those who have taken this choice. He had to do it because he was parked behind Van Gisbergen. The track position, he's got to get clear. He's not going to. He's not going to. No, he stopped. You may lose another spot. Oh, that was close. Cold tyres, mate, cold tyres. No cars coming down the front, so no cars. So you can back it off, mate, you can back it off. Cold tyres, cold tyres. Mark Dutton reinforcing the point. Cold tyres, be careful, don't blow it. Championship on the line. Will Davison, the first victim of the walls here at Sydney Olympic Park.
flat picture, mate. I don't know what we can do here, but that looks like their plan. Looking out from the Petters safety car to our race leader, Lee Holdsworth, who decided not to enter pit lane. This is the reason why we're on the safety car. Will Davison steering dramas for quite a few laps and then it eventually gave way. So Jamie Wincup was trying to get out of here ahead of Shane Van Gisbergen. Couldn't do that, but he really had to squeeze it to get in front of Tim Slade. It's James Moffat and Warren Luff. I might try and just get in here. I'm in the FPR garage, a lot of down faces down here. I mean, it's tough for the engineers, tough decision. Timmy Edwards, team principal. We thought we heard Will say on there that, you know, he really wanted to come in. We were a bit surprised you didn't bring him in. Is that what we heard or what was the story there? No, no, well, we actually thought uh, that he was going to come in. Um, but we said, look, you're the only one in the car. We can't tell how it feels from here. And he said, I'll push on. And what do you think? I mean, we're seeing a few bench steering arms already up the pit lane uh, banging the tyres. No, no, not the tyres at all, just the kerbs. The kerbs are just so aggressive. But, um, yeah, just over, puts too much load through the arm itself. All right, real shame, mate. He was quick this weekend. He was. Thanks, mate. Well, the interesting part of that was that we were listening to the engineer and the engineer said, you've got to get us to a safety car. So either the team have got to make a decision or the driver's got to make a decision. And either way, you don't park them in the tyres as a consequence. You end up with the safety car happens. With the safety but, car. But <laughs> cause not, one, not, not the way that you want to trigger it. That's right. So... Very awkward situation and uh, most likely traces back to the clobbering over the kerbs on the opening lap. We heard him lock up on the approach, lap one to turn two. He flew it across the kerb and then whacked it hard. This is Malcolm Swetnam in conversation. He's team manager Jim Beam Racing with Damien White from Operations at V8 Supercar. We'll squeeze in a break. Petter's safety car is the one that heads the pack at the moment. More to come.
About half a lap to go on the safety car and then we'll go racing again on a gorgeous Saturday afternoon in Sydney. Looking back towards the Harbour City from here at Sydney Olympic Park. Check that out. What a sight that's going to be in tonight. ANZ Stadium. The rock and race really uh, kicks on. Hunters and collectors headlining. John Farnham's on the list. Reese Maston's there. Noise works. Be a big one. You'll be there. Yeah. The interesting part now is that the top 10 cars haven't stopped. Lee Holdsworth, winner bottom, Rick Kelly, Michael Caruso, Jonathan Webb, that's your top five. They haven't stopped. Craig Lowndes is in that bunch, he's seventh. Of the guys that have stopped, that are on now a three-stop strategy, Van Gisbergen leads from Wing Cup and Slade. Well, Will, that was lucky, mate. We heard you having a bleed about the, uh, the car, the steering arm, potentially damaged. Um, what was your read? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's an issue we've had actually a little bit all weekend. We've been uh, bending steering arms on the kerbs, and uh, about the second lap I felt it bend straight away, and I was just doing my best to, uh, to stay out there, but it was just getting worse and worse, and finally it uh, broke as I turned in, so uh, pretty shattering car was a rocket. Bad luck, buddy. Well, that's a pity for Will Davison, because he was certainly in the right frame of mind to attack this circuit this weekend, but Lee Holdsworth, who won here on the Sunday last year, now has the race lead. Winterbot is behind him. Just go back to that incident we saw. Cleaning up Jeff Thompson from the V8 Supercar now. That conversation between Damien White and uh, Melbourne Sweatman, no doubt, will be uh, to discuss the legalities of all that. I wouldn't be at all surprised if James gets pinged for an unsafe release for that one. Turn five. Up to turn eight. Racing watching. Uh, any touch at all immediately result in a car that was released copying a penalty. That is not the case in 2011. Gary would be a happy man. One oh, four, a mark oh. in the wall in turn one. John Living car's gone in, and there's a bit of screeching in the background as well, so I su suspect there's more going on back there. Flag, pit lane drive through penalty for James Moffat, plus a five second hold for his trouble. So it's not just a PLP, it's a plus five. We're looking at Jason Bright, let's check this out for Jason Bargwana. Carbon copy, Will Davison style, but he bounced back out. Wow. Gee, oh, how good the tyres spun in. Right. <laughs> and uh, that all, the, all the noise that I could hear was Mark Ryder grabbing first gear and backing it up and disappearing again. So I thought there were more cars involved. Well, it, it was hard to tell who was right behind. So I don't know whether he got a little assistance or he just understeered in there. We've seen lots of cars in that spot. It's a very dangerous time of this race for Jamie Wincup now. Caught right in the middle of the field. He's in 12th position in behind, Bar uh, in behind uh, Van Gisberg and behind Bright. And right up behind them is an angry pack with Slade, Courtney, Todd Kelly and Greg Murphy. And now isn't this going to roll out to be a fascinating race? And a, and a quick glance there, I'd say probably, what, 50% as Moffat goes in for his drive through. As, I'd say roughly 50% of the field came through the pit lane, meaning that half and half on two and three stops. Now, boys, I didn't see exactly how many safety car laps there were in there. Remember we said the two stoppers need seven safety car laps to be able to make it. Any ideas? Well, I can answer that question for you, Marco. It was uh, three laps of safety car, so we're a little less than uh, halfway through that requirement, 40 odd percent. So uh, it'll be interesting to see just exactly how this unfolds for those that play the gambling game. And these guys have got around Jason Bright. So Shane Van Giesbergen is the first man in the queue to have taken a stop as James Moffat takes his penalty stop. 
of uh, five seconds plus the trundle through pit lane as well. So remember that Van Gisberg and Wing, uh, Wing Cup came in. Ten cars did not come in. And as you mentioned, Scaife, what it does is it puts Wing Cup in particular, but all those guys back in the middle of the field in traffic. Well, we just saw it's Van Gisberg and, and Wing Cup who are continuing this race-long battle just get by Jason Bright last lap. So they were fourth behind Bright, which was making it more dangerous, and backed them back up to the field with Slade and Tander. But the way that it's working out now is that still, as they get up to the back with Steve Owen, they've got to forge their way through the field. Their speed is very good. This is the pass, Van Gisberg, and down the inside of Bright. Winkup gets a good run and gets down the inside up the short straight between turn one and turn two. Turn two is the top of Olympic Boulevard. Is the chicane that we're about to go into right now at the top of this hill. Remember that uh, Van Gisbergen has stopped. He's the first in the queue of those who have, and he's 10. So he'll come right behind. Before all the uh, nonsense unfolded there with Will Davison, when uh, we saw Van Gisbergen suddenly get a giddy up in terms of his speed, he'd gone to his richest fuel position because they wanted Dave Stewart wanted him to make a pass, wanted car speed. It was interesting that he picked up so much extra pace when they gave him the additional super to fire well, There's a bit of drama going back there. That's Garth Tander with Craig Lowndes. They've also had a race-long battle. And Tander must have had a little balk on the way out of the bus stop section there because Lowndes definitely had pace. And it's not over because Garth has blocked all the way down the straight and done at Dawn Fraser Avenue. This is turn nine. Craig will be starting to get a little frustrated with this. It might be okay on the last lap of Bathurst, but for him right now, he has got championship written all over this move, and he's going to have to do something about it. Garth Tander made it really clear in the lead-up to this. He said, I don't give a hoot what they're doing in the championship. I'm out here to win a race. And he's playing for keeps on this one. Looks like he's actually got a bit of rear bumper damage on that car, Garth Tander. So, Holdsworth. Three quarters of a second over Winterbottom at the moment, yet to stop. Nine cars in the queue who haven't taken a stop. They're running a more conventional strategy. You can see the margins on the Coates Hire leaderboard. First in the queue who has stopped, Van Gisbergen, followed by Jamie Wincup, their 10th and 11th. Supercar racing here on seven, and the door has opened just a little bit for Jamie Winkup in terms of the championship. He's managed to get clear of Shane Van Gisbergen, who's just made a tiny error. This is it on replay. They've been going at it since the start of the race, and then 
just wide enough for Wing Cup to slide on pass down here at turn one. Very, very important pass that. You just see Van Gisbergen disappear down the runoff at turn one. That's effectively the battle for the lead of the cars that have stopped now. Wing Cup is the leader of those cars. Now, the real interesting thing is the two stop versus three stop thing. There's basically going to be 10 seconds difference in how much time they have to stop for fuel. Holdsworth has a 10 second lead over Wink Cup and they've now got to have two more stops. So it'll be very interesting in the next little phase of the race whether Holdsworth can sneak away or Wink Cup can make ground. Yeah, the, better, the best way to probably summarise that is just ignore for a moment those who have stopped and understand that from this point forward everybody still has to do two stops. It doesn't matter whether you have or haven't in the past. But what changes, what Mark's saying there is what changes is the amount of standstill time to grab your fuel. So uh, a little bit to play out of this one, but we're, we're not taking into account future safety car probabilities in those statements. You've just got to be so careful. So at the moment, Wing Cup looks very, very good. It's 10, had his stop. Loud's only a couple of spots up the road at seven. But Wing Cup has got the one thing that he's wanted since the start of this race, which is track position. He's got it off Van Gisbergen. Craig Lowndes is finding it very difficult to get off Garth Tander. Garth was having a move over to the inside of the road down North Fraser Avenue again. So he'll be frustrated. Craig Lowndes tucked in behind the back of Garth. And it, of all the guys to create pressure. Jeremy Moore saying, try for a couple more laps. So he wants to try to get by and get some track position. This is Garth Tander right in front. Jumps the web just in front. Then he's done a very good job all weekend. He's been very competitive and obviously this place suits him. So Garth Tander made that couple of position gain on the opening lap of the race. That's basically helped Craig Lowndes there for the remainder of the next 23 laps. This will be making brakes very hot in those cars, particularly Lowndes. He's oh, oh, my God. You could have knocked oh, the point. Cut went about as close as you did, whacking the wall there at five. Gee, he was in the marbles and the dirt. I don't know how he got away with that wind cup. That is so brave. That is out of control. At the most dangerous corner on the track. He's out around the outside of Fiori, in the marbles, sideways. That is championship over. This no. Bringing Tander in this lap. That'll change the game slightly for Team Vodafone. Owen down the inside now. Wow. This is the ninth position for the VIP Pet Foods entry. So just reiterating, Tander will come in this lap, most likely. This, Van Gisbergen up the inside of Fiori as well. I'd rather have that inside pass than the outside one. Huh? Yeah, and talk about facing your demons head on. That was the turn, remember, that effectively cost Wind Cup the championship last year. Didn't mess around this time around. So this is the conventional strategy that Mark Ryan has five talked about. Another five or six seconds. Get the wheel spinning. Get the wheel spinning. Wheel down spinning. Stopped. Save, save. All right, so we need a really quick outlap here, really quick outlap. Look at this. Right, 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 right. I, I cannot explain how wild that is. Look at that. That is unbelievable. That is as risky as you would ever see from the championship leader. That would put you out of this race. It's unbelievable. I mean, I know he was around the outside, but he had to give the throttle a breath and tuck in. He's bringing up the dust and the dirt and the leaves out there. He only just got away with it, Scopey. Oh, 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 problem here, big problem here. And there's been some sort of contact. 88's got a problem. It's got a, it's got damage on the front right corner. Steve Owens in the wall at turn eight. Remember I said just a few moments ago, it could be some chaos. I think it's damage related. Now this is the, this is the stuff that causes the chaos here. Remember, that's from being outside. Okay, Look, we're it's not get over here. Bay. You're gonna get to drive into Another your car. Bay. Craig will be in the pit stop. Craig will be in the pit stop. Look at you, swing wide and into your bay. Copy that. On. They're all off. Murphy's in the fence. Lush down the escape road. There is absolute chaos in this race. There's the championship leader. They're all in the pit lane. 
That's come from that driver around the fast right-hander, a fast turn five. Broken steering, I think, for Jamie Wincup. The leader of the championship. Hits the wall, finds damage. And he's in pit lane, safety car. And we'll have to queue in pit lane. That means this goes on till tomorrow. All clear. All clear. This is a game-changing moment for Team Vodafone. Straight in the garage. This if Lowndes gets a decent result here, this pushes the championship outcome to Sunday. And there's a safety car. We saw this sort of activity last year in very similar circumstances with damaged cars and pit work. There's Mark Larka on site. Larka? Yeah, very hard to see, mate, but when they pulled the wheel out, the whole upright dropped, so something is broken. I can't see, mate, and I don't want to obviously push these guys out of the way, but I'm guessing it might be a shock mount. Can't quite see, but there's something... Uh... Hang on. Yeah, bear with us. Just bear with us, and I'll get back to you. Look at the stress on Jamie Winkup's face there. He knows the implications of what's just taken place. And this team have got to respond. Well, he's done all the hard work. And maybe had done it a little bit this too it. hard. Watch this. This is the moment. That's it. No, this is a different one. Next lap. Yeah, it's yeah. a different one. So, that, so I mean, he, he tested the limits previously when we had our breath with Fiori, but this was a, a big contact with the outside wall at five. Don't know why he was out there. Could have been because of a failure that was brewing from what happened the lap earlier. Who knows? But it was a separate occurrence. Incredible. This championship is unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah, just confirming, just spoke to Mark Dutton, uh, Jamie's engineer, it is a broken damper as we thought, it's um, it's broken one of the mounts off one end, so what that'll mean is two bolts, damper out and a new damper in, so I'm guessing probably about a four to six minute job if everything goes right, now, it depends if there's a bolt meant or not, they've got a new damper here on the ground ready to go in, new shock absorber, so uh, yeah, a couple of laps. Well, Larko, the way that that front suspension won't move at the moment, I think there's more to the story because you don't hit the fence like that. You watch this. Just have a look on board. This is Steve Allen. Uh, but up in front, you can see the, the drama. It looks like it had already failed. Something had failed before he got there. And then Steve Allen, of course, remember, he finds trouble as well. So he's gone in by himself at turn eight. But prior, this is, this is already broken, absolutely already broken, so we had no choice and understeers into the fence where they all crashed last year and there's a lot of damage. That won't just be replace the shock absorber, there'll be more to it. Have a look. This is surreal. Bang! That hits hard, that's 200k. Wow. Bizarre. The lap before, he takes on that spot one of the gutsiest moves you can find and survived it. Lap later at the very same spot where he lost the championship 12 months ago, it comes out and bites him again. And as a result, the man who could have wrapped up the championship this afternoon simply by finishing in front of Craig Lowndes, or if Lowndes wins, he just had to finish top four, is now still in the garage thinking about Sunday. And Matt was the effective leader of the race because at that stage had done a stop, was the lead car after the Van Gisbergen had passed, the race was his. Yeah, that's right. Did all the hard work to get past Van Gisbergen and that's a dejected man. And that's the man, Adrian Burgess, the guy on the left, who was in James Courtney's corner last year when all this drama unfolded between those two teams. Change the right front to set three. It's all sitting over there, ready to go, just so you all know. That'll be a cold one too, Jade, up cold right front. Yeah, the best that uh, Jamie could hope to achieve here by getting this race car and his crew back out on the racetrack would be 26th, which is worth a few points. 
There's a bit of nose to tail contact there as well between one of the Jack Daniels cars. I think it was Todd Kelly and Tim Slade. Wow. I just, you know, this sport just amazes me. Motor racing can be so cruel. He got away with one of the wildest passes you would see in motorsport history. One of the fastest corners out wide gets away with it. The next corner, you have a slap, you have a suspension fight, you go to the fence in the same circumstances of the year before. If you wrote a script, you'd say, no way. You'd say, no, 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 no that's weird. Not in a million years, at, and especially in perfect weather. It's a long way to go, and there's different strategies at play, so it's not a clean discussion at the moment of different strategies, but Lounge Lound is currently ninth. He walked away here at the end of today, ninth. He'd have 2,929 points. By my reckoning, when they get these guys uh, back out there in car 88, 26th is the best that Wind Cup's going to achieve. It might be better if there's more DNFs, but that's 3,060. It goes on to tomorrow. This is pretty lively now with Mark Lerner. Murphy down the inside, right up in behind. His car 33, Lee Holdsworth with Mark Winterbottom in behind. Holdsworth has been the guy who's been pacey all day and off the road goes Barguana. Safety cars bring safety cars, we say it all the time. Those two guys, Murphy and Barguana, have both been into the fence anyway in the last 10 minutes. Marco. Yeah, mate, they've just put uh, Jamie's car on the go, Jack, so ready to push him back out in the pit lane. So uh, watch as that shot talking in the inside. Probably pretty lucky, Scope, you that it was only that. Yeah, very lucky, Larko. But that really proves how strong those cars are in terms of durability. We see Ben Gisberger on the inside of Barguana in turn eight, and someone's off the road. That was Jonathan Webb. That was very close to going in the tyres that we saw Steve Owen just before the safety car. And here's Holdsworth having a really good look at Murphy. And up in top left hand screen is the series leader. Tony Winkup with repairs done now. Have to be very careful when he goes out now because you've got to check over the first sort of quarter of the lap that the steering is okay and make sure that you don't have a similar occurrence that the repair has been done properly. front straight. And here's Winkup. Now he's in 26. This is a massive readjustment in the thought process also that he's got to go through. That's right. We're just now he's going to go and do a really good professional job of, of bringing this car back at the end of the race in one piece. He's three laps down, and you know he's three laps down, that's what it's about. And importantly, he's two laps down on 25th, as we see the replay of Barnes going straight ahead at turn two. Uh, Wind Cup is two laps behind Paul Dumbrell, who came in right at the start of the race, if you recall. So, unless other people do it, I mean, they are going to, there's going to be more trouble before this thing's done. 26th to Jamie Wind Cup, maybe one or two increments further up the road when others have strife. Lowndes at the moment reiterating that point. It's nice for him, but he's on a different strategy here and there than some other guys, so we don't have a clear picture of his position. But that's a gap between them of 131 points, which means they will run on until tomorrow. It's 150 points up for a win. That's enough. Lee just stunned himself there because he tried to get Murphy, and then Murphy hung him out at turn 10, and Winterbottom has actually gone past Lee Holdsworth now. So that's a critical manoeuvre. Lee handled the traffic poorly with that manoeuvre, or half manoeuvre, down the inside of Murphy. When you get on that far, you've got to make it stick. I said early on that Mark Winterbottom had the run of the race in the opening phase. He's been... Free of trouble. Lee Holdsworth, as you mentioned, has had to battle a bit of this traffic now. And he's in effective second spot, if you like. He's fifth. Ingalls, our leader. Stephen Johnson is second. Greg Murphy's ahead of them. Ahead of Winterbottom and Holdsworth, that is. Oh, oh took that. Oh. Yeah, has been in everything, and Barks has been in the wars. And uh, a little bit of history there, despite those two uh, being Bathurst winners together back in the year 2000, they did get together at Queensland Raceway this year, and uh, Garth made it clear then that he was going to press on, so a bit of a wobble for Barnes. Yet again, this place has proven that anything can happen, not only in the V8 supercars, but the Telstra 500.
So this extraordinary championship has taken more extraordinary twists and turns on the second last day of the season. Lap 32 out of 74, so still a long way to go in this race. And Greg Murphy goes around again. Big contact. <laughs> Can there be any more drama here? Yep. Seriously. That's out of control. And this hasn't, this is not over. Look at this. This is Van Giersbergen down the inside. Had nowhere to go, Holdsworth. And now Lowndes will get a run. And you have to be careful because this is the spot where we saw all the drama before. So Lowndes cleverly comes out of the funnel and saves. They're going to bring Wind Cup in and, and make a, a, a toe adjustment to that car, front geometry adjustment. I guess also the critical thing for them is to make sure that the car's right for the moment. Well, they, well, no, they need him to get points, Matty. They need points today, absolutely. Yeah, he's got, they need to make sure that he gets classified. So yes, you, your point is right. It's more than the story. Here we go, back down the inside here. Holdsworth argues with Van Gisbergen. That was very, very close to being ugly. And that's given Lowndes the run. So Holdsworth's done it twice. And Lowndes now benefits from the same manoeuvre that Mark Winterbottom put on. Tander trying to nibble away at the back of Holdsworth's car also. So a couple of manoeuvres that haven't come off for Lee have really hurt his position. He's actually lost four positions as a consequence of that. So this is just a little safety adjustment to make sure that this car is OK. Because effectively there's nobody behind him. He's 26th at the moment, but remember Will Davison, who's 27th, showing on the computer, is out of the game. And so is Tony Delberto. So they can afford this stop. Safety jacks are under the car. And this is what happened to Greg Murphy. And this is Mark Winterbottom tagging him big time. So I think that's probably going to result in a penalty for uh, Mark Winterbottom. I don't think he was from the angle I just saw then. Didn't look like he was far enough up. made the remark before that safety cars breed safety cars and that's what happens here. It just scrambles the pack, the natural order gets fiddled around with it. and particularly because more so this year than previous years, very different sections of the field are on different strategies so it, it basically mixes and matches everybody. They're in different phases of their tyre life and their fuel loads which means their lap speed's different. I can't get into it. I reckon this circuit breeds safety cars. So what they're doing down here at Jamie Winkup's car, so Jamie would have told them his steering would have been pointing down one way or the other. The guys have a fair idea, you see them under there with the spanners, those little steering arms we see often bent, they've got a nut on each end, they'll adjust them, and normally what you do in the workshop is put a string line around this car, or lasers, to true it all up. But in this instance they can't do that, so the mechanic standing out front here has been eyeballing along the sides of the front to the rear tyres because they want toe out. You know, generally you run a couple of mil of what we call toe out. So the two front tyres just turn out a little bit. It's a good point, Marco. The guys looking at in what we call an eyeball wheel alignment, which is basically trying to make the front tyres track true. And when they did that front right replacement before, obviously it bent the steering arm in addition to what was the shock absorber bent. And as a consequence, when you go back out, the steering wheel is offset, so they have to put some toe out back on that right-hand front to straighten the wheels up. They obviously don't want to properly wheel line it because you'll be there for half an hour, so they just do it by eye. Sort of the Mark, the Mark Larkin wheel alignment you call. Jamie just reporting that it's not perfect, but it's a lot better than it was after bringing it in for that adjustment. So that's helped his cause, and uh, they're getting back out to protect his position. Now, interestingly, uh, Jonathan Webb is also in the lane as well, and uh, whatever's delaying him has allowed Jamie, it's the walking wounded, so Jamie's actually gone up, I mean, you wouldn't normally know about this, but he's moved up to 25th, and uh, that has a vital impact on his points. Lowndes, meantime, is up to 7th, so, I mean, this is going to continue to jump around, folks, so don't weld the numbers too deeply into the brain. The extraordinary thing about Jamie Winkup is he starts from 5th position, he ends up having a battle with Shane Van Gisbergen. He reports over the radio that the car is fantastic, track position isn't. Whack! This is what happens to him. A lap after pulling off one of the most wild passes at that very spot. 
into the fence. No championship today for that man. The view from Steve Owens, VIP Pet Foods car, is just as ugly for the championship leader. Now the reason, you know, you get excited when you're in the team Vodafone pit about what 25th gives you over 26th is you make another three points. It might be really important when it comes to tomorrow. Russell Ingle leads the race. Winterbottom is looking very good. Mark Winterbottom, back here on the streets of Sydney Olympic Park, is really having some trouble right now. He's going to have to serve a penalty, touch on that in a second, because right now he's just trying to hold control. He's got Michael Caruso behind him. He just lost it on approach down to turn one, including cork in the bottle. Extraordinary again, because he's been having such a good race up to this point, but he's going to be pinged. You said he's got problems when you play through the chicane there, Matt. He's got bigger problems because he's got that big lane drive through penalty to serve. It's been issued by the race director. So uh, he'll have to respect that command very shortly. He'll pop this lap then soon thereafter. And uh, I'll be saying I did my best to avoid him, but that's. Uh, to the oh, Van Gisbergen, big problems for him at turn 12. Now remember that he's in a battle for third, and he's in the battle with Mark Winterbottom. Now Winterbottom serving a pit lane drive yeah, through mate, penalty. Just try and, uh, just try and get round and give me a heads up on what you think, Scott. And Van Gisbergen uh, just about got unloaded up at 12, and there's some problem with the front of the car. These are more spots for Lout, who's now up to fifth. Here's Van Gisbergen, we heard him in the background on the radio, and Wink Cup, meantime, has moved to 24. It's worth another three points. Van Gisbergen's going backwards. He's got massive problems at the front of the SP Tools car. It was wobbling all over the place, coming down the main straightaway, Australia Avenue. And now he's just a passenger in this thing. He's going to have to get it around about a half a lap to go. So all these top contenders are sliding out left, right and centre out of the picture and it's falling nicely into Michael Caruso's hands. Oh, that's so it's wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact with Rick Kelly.
So he was around the right. When Rick come across, have a look from the top. This is a great shot. Rick goes to get his line and bang, wheel to wheel. So Lowndes couldn't do anything about it. I thought Lowndes gave Van Gisberg a rub, but he couldn't do anything about it. Now his engineer escapee, Dave Stewart, was straight on it. He said he's been hit by Rick Kelly. Uh, broken steering, they've got to bring him in. Yeah. Front left, hopped a heavy whack, Barretts. Implications for his battle for third in this championship at the moment. Garth Panders, an other combatant in that. So was Bill Davison, but he's... Oh, oh, man, what's going on here? This is on board with Lowndes. Now Lowndes has got to make sure now. I'm sure Jeremy's onto it. Stop. He's just... Jeremy Moore in the background. Lance now going to have the leanest, easiest race known to man. He's just got to get this thing home. The gap at the moment is 110 points. And things freeze as they are on the 74th flat between he and his teammate. He's just trying to stay out of trouble was Lance's response. Oh, I reckon that's going to be saying the done, CL. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, exactly. Bad news is they're on lap 39 to 74. I the chances of that are big fat zero. So Michael Caruso now takes race. Oh, Stephen Johnson yeah. and then look at this, Lowndes oh. so far out. So the reason that happened was that Stevie Johnson was trying to get to the pit lane. <laughs> 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 he takes up the and, and down. And your, your point's right, the money just gone past half yeah, I, I don't know if my blood pressure can handle this for the rest of the hour. Okay. Seriously, it's a very difficult thing for, for the driver and the engineer, in this case Lowndes and Jeremy Moore to do. But the, the chill pill's the answer at the moment. Just ease it down. But it let a couple of guys go past if that's the case. A bit of coaching and a bit of coaxing just to sneak the thing to the end with all four corners on it. And in your back pocket, not dollars, but points. That's what you need. And in these kind of races, you've got to go looking for the people who haven't seen any trouble. Which is not easy, but... There's a reason why Michael Caruso is 4.3 seconds further up the road than these, this bunch that we're focusing on. That's because he's kept a nice, steady, clean race. It's fallen beautifully for him. He started ninth. He started on the same row of the grid as Craig Lowndes. Now Caruso, Jiu-Jitsu Gary Rogers Motorsport Commodore, has control of this race. So that's second, that's third. Lee Holdsworth is fourth. Garth Tan is behind him in fifth. Tan has tapped just about everybody out there. James Courtney's behind him. Then it's Tim Slade, Jason Bright, Todd Kelly, and David Reynolds make up your top ten. Stand back. <laughs> Incoming. <laughs> Sydney Telstra 500, we've clicked over halfway on day one of a championship battle that is now certain to go the distance to the final race of the season. Let's take a break here with Michael Caruso in control of this race by almost five seconds now.
Russo leads the race. Craig Lowndes is in the race of his life to go for his fourth V8 Supercar Championship. And now he comes up alongside Rick Kelly and makes the statement and makes it stick. He's moving across now because Rick might have another dive at him at the end of Gordon Fraser Avenue. He needs to make sure that he covers. Rick's quite sensible about that. He didn't take the opportunity to plunge down the inside. We've seen so many guys dive at turn nine. So a very good performance by Lowndes to be second. This race is about to unfold. They're two to three laps away from the critical lap number. And the pit stops will determine where it all heads. Scafi, I think we need to put a full stop or wrap up the whole wing come scenario. I've got uh, Mark Dutton here. Jamie's engineer, uh, wow, mate, uh, you, you set out on this day, you didn't expect that. A um, couple of things, really surprised Jamie was pushing very hard, which we love that about him, yeah. but appeared that possibly broke or something broke beforehand. Yeah, so um, it, it was the front damper that broke. The kerbs here are very aggressive, as we know. Uh, they're good kerbs, but, and, uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's what's happened. We'll, uh, we'll keep pushing on and see how many points we can get and uh, come out fast tomorrow. Good curbs, mate. Very philosophical statement. Well done. We'll jump around the back here. I'm just going to try and grab Jeremy Moore. Jerry, who's uh, Craig Lowndes' engineer. Um, again, now you've arrived here at this, probably the spot where this bloke here was a minute ago. Strategy-wise, we talked about the two-stop strategy. Now you've had probably enough safety cars to make it home. Absolutely, yeah. We were right to go for a one more stop to the end. So, yeah, we're looking good at the moment. And finally, standing in between these two folks, Adrian Burgess, mate, how are you managing all of this? And Roland Dane over the back. Yeah, it's not the easiest uh, afternoon in the office, but yeah, we're here to win a winner race. The championship will decide itself. The best man will win it. Good on you, mate. Well done. I uh, saw Adrian in the gents just before the start of the race and uh, said, keep a lid on those blokes this afternoon. He said, uh, no guarantees in that department. <laughs> and I reckon that was pretty accurate. So this is the mistake we saw with Rick Kelly. Wow, that's a big Scandinavian flick from one way to the other. And when he comes out the other side, this is on board now with Lowndes. Have a look at this. Sideways one way, massively sideways the other way, and Craig gets up the inside. So a very good move and took that opportunity, and this is the pass at turn eight on Rick Kelly. That's for position two. Lee Holtzworth's coming in this lap, car number 33. He's fourth at the moment. And uh, in these changing fortunes that we've been tracking with Lowndes to position two and Wincup pretty much welded in, in position 24 at the moment unless there are further DNFs and that's a very strong possibility. Yeah, that's an 83 point margin between those drivers, 83 points. Yeah, Jonathan Wednesday is over, guys. Uh, very disappointing. The guy who won last year here on Saturday out of the race today, just those aggressive curbs have broken his rear suspension. They're working on it at the moment. The idea is to get Webby back out there so they can get some Ks in the car, get, get it settled and get it right for tomorrow and have another crack. Thanks, Brett. We were trying to work out what had actually happened to the car because we saw him run wide. He had a big slide at turn eight. We didn't know after that what had taken place. So research on the Jonathan Webb mobile and uh, damage to the rear of that car. Most of the cars have had front damage with either the front upright or front shock absorber and the rear of that car failing. Now the best position fellow who's uh, trying to get onto the last spot of the podium for the championship this year is Garth Pander. He's fifth at the moment. He's uh, back with Mark Winterbottom and Shane Van Gisbergen. Well Shane is currently in eighth position and Mark is currently in sixteenth. So Pander's the one that's going to do a bit of damage to their point score as now Lee comes in as predicted. On our numbers, he can't make it home from there. He needs another safety car on those numbers. So this will be very interesting. They do this a lot, and they take the punt on the safety car. So the strategy of this race really unfolding as Lee Holdsworth comes down pit lane. In the background is Dave Reynolds, and soon there'll be guys like Craig Lowndes in pit lane. This is a fascinating motor race.
Mighty Mighty, just try and restart it there, mate. It's just ramp really sick, it happened all pressure alarm, okay, boy. Best flavor, how did that, mate? Okay, good call. About that, mate. You're up to uh, seven you know. Just a bit more drama added to the mix. Jason Bright, oil pressure on the track. And he's parked, which means that everybody's come spearing into pit lane and Craig Lowndes comes in. Michael Caruso, a race leader, heads out. When they went in, the gap was five seconds or thereabouts. And you can see that it's closed. Lowndes is now closer to the race lead. Uh, this is Jason Bright and the reason for the safety car. And he was reporting a sick engine and an oil pressure alarm. Phil Keaty's engineer said, can you start it up and get it back? And uh, given the north of $100,000 worth of engine in these cars, best to just leave it where it is and tow it. So that was a little earlier than they were ready to stop. So everybody has taken the punt on the safety car and the fuel of consumption to get home. Most of them will be OK based on our numbers. Uh, and it's actually helped Lee Holdsworth because prior to that, he would have been in trouble with it. So. The real effect of this is it's now an outright sprint with 46 laps down with Caruso in front of Craig Lowndes and Rick Kelly. And there's a problem with this car and they've been in conversation about bringing it into the garage but this time like, they're just dealing with it in the pit lane. They've got a heap of race tape on the front of it. But uh, this, if they continue to have problems with this car and there's been a fair bit of radio conjecture, uh, then this could have the effect of bumping Jamie Winkup further up in the field. He's currently 24th. Paul Dumbrell at the moment is 22nd, splitting them as Steve Owen. And they've shut it down, so they're going to spend more time on trying to resolve the problem here. So, you know, a lap or two might make a big difference here for the story for Winkup. Hold your breath for these highlights because they are just crazy. Will Davison starts from pole position. Lee Holdsworth has a good crack at him. Straight off the uh, start. But it was a real battle here between Shane Van Gisbergen and Jamie Winkup as Davison goes into the fence at turn one, broken steering. Winkup spent what looked like an eternity trying to get around Shane Van Gisbergen. James Moffat collects Warren Luff and almost on the V8 supercar officials. And this is the critical moment. So that massive dive down there at turn five, then a lap later, and it's broken on the way in for Jamie Winkup. He smashes into the fence. And that would result in the front damper being broken. Positions lost. The man behind him was Steve Owen on the track. He found his own dramas. But this was the story of the day. Still with 27 laps to go, I might add, at this stage. And uh, Jamie Winkup just had to sit there in pit lane and watch what could have been a championship race today sail on by him. <laughs> Shane Van, I mean, at this stage, it's just take a look and see what happened because everything was going on. But Craig Lowndes now starts to motor up through the field. He gets by Rick Kelly. He's now in second position. Michael Caruso is the race leader, and here is Winkup. He had a 188-point lead coming into today. He's 
basically bled 100 points thereabouts against his teammate. And at the moment, Jamie still showing now in 23rd position. He's three laps behind Dumbrell, but as you saw, the Botlow cars parked in the lane. And so uh, that margin, that three lap gap between those two is clicking down at the moment. That could have the effect of bringing Wind Cup up to 22nd. The reason this is important is those minor placings just give you little points yield. Lights out at turn eight. Accelerate away from the field, 34 to maintain speed. Former sports car, international sports car and Formula One driver, Tim Schenken, race director. And uh, there's the Dumbrell car, 23rd in the field. That'll give you a yield of 36 points for Jamie Whitcup. Get to the next position, he grabs another three again. The points are weighted in favour of those that achieve at the sharp end of the field. So every one of these positions that Lowndes grabs by comparison pulls the margin back to win cup. So Lowndes in P2 at the moment. We've been tracking his progress as he's tried to deal with the war zone going on and in and around his car. Every time he grabs a spot, it's not three points he grabs, he pours heaps of it because the championship is weighted in favour of those that succeed. If he gets to the front of this race, it's another 12, uh, 12 points. And this restart is ultra important because it's a genuine sprint to the finish. And Caruso's been competitive all weekend. Lowndes has forced his way forward from a 10th qualifying position. And he will want to get by Michael Caruso. They're already talking about saving fuel in that safety car period. I think we're going to hear that unless there's another safety car incident. I should rephrase that. When there is another safety car incident, that might actually take the heat out of that discussion. But until it happens, they're going to have to be very cautious. Gartan in qualified 11th, and he's up to fourth. And he's ahead of the men who he's fighting for third in the championship with. Mark Winterbottom, Shane Van Gisbergen are ahead of him on the championship ladder. But Van Gisbergen seventh. Winterbottom is 12. Look at this. Look at this. It's game on for the first four positions. They're all switching around on each other. Tanda looks really racy here at the moment. And so does Lowndes. He's all over the back of Caruso. Dives to the inside. Turn nine. Goes back to the outside. Caruso on the dirty line. So is Rick Kelly. Looks for the crisscross. Tries to use his first gear here. Lowndes tries to stab it up the inside. Second, third. Through the right hander here, so Lance is trying to point and squirt. Hurts the rear tyres a little bit, but means the car leaks off the corner. But Michael's got good enough corner speed. Jeremy Moore, counsellor. Good call, it's very well said. Remember if you're out and about, catch all the action on Big Pond Sport. This is a cracking race, and Caruso, he will have not felt this level of pressure from Craig Lowndes, who not only wants to win this race, but wants to win this championship. Caruso's only won once in his career. As we know, Lowndes has done it all. He's won 81 races. It's 12 crucial points that he wants out of that first position. The top step on the podium is just the icing on the cake. Because all of a sudden, after what was a shocking qualifying run in the top 10 shootout where the lap just went left, right and centre for Craig Lowndes. He's now in the position not only to win the race, leave here with maximum points, but turn the tables completely on his teammate and line up tomorrow with a genuine chance at another V8 Supercar Championship. Gizzy up one position, Shane Van Gisberg and moves to fifth in the SP Tools entry. And that's on his own teammate, Tim Slade, Stone Brothers Racing, Malacca 7 car. That's important because Tanda and Van Gisbergen are battling for third in the championship panel damage. And so they're by the stern. Slade's lost the door. Your skin has come off the right rear corner of Tim's car. And so fourth and fifth, Tanda and Van Gisbergen. And I just wonder, Pronto, where that's landed on the track. If it does force another safety car, remember, we're also watching the fuel gauge here. They're going to be pushing it right to the limit, just like they did last year. And that's why that's why just peeled it off. So that's the championship battle as it stands now. If you froze the field right now, we come. It came in here with a 188-point buffer. It's been whittled down to 86.
86. Remember, 150 points on offer tomorrow. So only an 86-point gap if they finish as they are currently. And 150 points for tomorrow's final race. We're riding here with Jim Beam Racing, James Moffat. And uh, 13th for him at the moment. He's been drawn the moment back in that 2 3 4 chicane. Look at this train of cars. And here's where things go wrong on street circuits. When one of those guys bobbles, it's a little bit like what happens. <laughs> It's a little bit like what happens uh, in peak hour, you know, it's a skills process then because two, three, four and five in the queue all get involved. And you only need to run slightly wide combo because when you park right up behind, you know, the visibility is so poor, isn't it? The guy in front, you're trusting the guy in front to be perfectly online. So if he's a little wide, he bumps the fence, you hit the fence. Down the inside here for Courtney. Yes, and Todd Kelly. Kelly. Todd Kelly in the sprint car, sideways. He uh, slid it through 11 and he had to flick it the other way like a rally car. It was his best Neil Bates impression to get around turn 12, but he got away with it. Because Courtney got queued behind Tander in those last stops. So Tander's currently four. Courtney was right behind him. So Courtney's gone from fifth right down to 14th. Special mention, Stephen Johnson started 21st. Up to seven. Yeah, he's had a stomach bug all week. And I saw him on Thursday and he, he was a lighter shade of green. Here's Tim Slade. Still no word from race control as to whether they're comfortable with that door skin missing, but there's nothing flapping or looking likely to drop off, so at this stage it looks like he's okay. Half a second officially the margin for Russo Lowndes. Davey Reynolds tucked in behind Stephen Johnson made up 17 spots. Yeah, that's right. It's a great run for Dave Reynolds from 25th up to 8th. I think last year Jason Bright went from 28 to 7. Oh, Murphy almost gone. He's a good save. He moments, hasn't he? He's been kissing. Greg Murphy's trying to be bashed and belted and sliding. It looks like a dog thing for oversteer. Oh, was it? As soon as he turned the wheel, it was gone. Um, now, we come to the 22nd grabbing points where it can, and there's a chorus, they're all singing from the same hip book at the moment, fuel, 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 save fuel. The key guys, the top four runners, all stopped on lap 46, so they're all tied together. It's now a question of how their cars and the drivers manage the burn, the burn rate of that Supergen bioethanol. Guys, I'd just like to show you a steering arm. We've talked about these today. We've seen a lot of them bent, including Paul Dumbrell, who bent the other side. Now, here's one here. This is typical of any V8 supercar steering arm. And you can see, we've talked about before, see, they call that little waste in there, where they do a little machine detail, so it actually bends. Now, that's really good, because if that didn't bend, the force would go into the steering rack and break, break the steering rack, and then you are in strife. But I've got to say, the amount of these that are happening, I think for tomorrow, there's going to be guys, they can't change these overnight. These are fine. They're going to have to reevaluate how they set the springs and dampers on their car, and how, as a driver, you attack the curves. Yeah, that was the bit that I wanted to add. Thanks, Marco. Exactly. I think the last bit's the one you can really control. I know you make lap speed, but it's no good making lap speed if you don't make the chequered flag. Look at this. This is the big moment. Courtney, uh, Tom Kelly, tank oh, slapper, but... and then the, the tank slapper goes in both directions. He, he had it all going in turn 11. He had it all going in turn 12. It starts with a little love bite. And have a look at Tom. He needed uni joints on his elbows to catch that one, and he managed to do it. <laughs> Honestly, stuff that just uh, bubbles around in your head is it's very, very, very scary. Serious drama going on. <laughs> Lowndes is closing in on Michael Caruso. Can Craig Lowndes get this race lead? Can Michael Caruso hold off one of the greats? There's a lot to play out in race 27 of the season.
19 to go. It's no surprise that Michael Caruso is in with a shot and is leading this race better than in with a shot. His average finish around here over the last few years is about fifth position. He's one of only four drivers to have finished the four races that we've had around this circuit, so it shows you how hard it is to get to the end. And now he's trying to hold off Craig Lowndes for just what would be his second race, to win, race win of his career. He's done a great job all weekend and he's, he's obviously been very competitive every time we've been here. But funny, on the last lap, whilst we're in the break, his engineer said to him, uh, continue to save fuel, but don't give up the lead. <laughs> it's like, do you still believe in Santa? <laughs> now, the other thing that's happened in the break is that Paul Dumbrell's come in the Bonlo car. They parked that car to continue some work on it. That means that Wind Cup has now caught up at what was originally a three-lap margin to Dumbrell, who's been wobbling. So Wind Cup's now gone to 21st. A little bunch of points. There's the Bonlo car. Uh, bent uh, other side of the, the front of the car, so it's got a bent steering arm, I believe. And uh, Lowndes, meantime, is less than a second away from the leading race. He must have been ground on the stroke when we had that overhead shot there a moment ago. Indeed. But the other amazing thing here, Scammy and I were just talking about this, his job in qualifying, whether it was the track changed or the car balance or the tyre set or the position of the moon, he did a shocker in qualifying and then he's bounced back in the race with what is turning out to be one of the best drives of his life. And we've seen this a bit lately. Hey guys, I'm just down here at Gary Rogers Motorsport. Now one of the techniques that the drivers employ, I'll tell you up and down the pit lane, there's a lot of nervous engineers. This is going to go down to the wire on fuel. This is going to be one of those rippers. But one of the one of the techniques that drivers employ is what we call rolling out of the throttle. So normally what you do is bury it 100 percent throttle down into the brake area, jump off and on the brakes. Now a way to conserve fuel as you get close to your brake area, you can actually roll out of the throttle. Keep the car momentum going before you get on the brakes. Now if we just have a quick look at uh, Mick Caruso's, Caruso's data here, so these are his speed traces. This one here, see the sharp angle, so that speed and bang it drops. But you can look now, see the little one. Look at that, see that little radius there? That's where he's rolling out of the throttle, dropping off a little bit of speed, bang, on the brakes. Fascinating stuff. Yeah, and, the, and the, a good, it's a really good point, like that, because that's the best way to save fuel. Short shifting and maybe not buzzing so much on the down change, and the rollout of, of the throttle is definitely the way to save fuel. But what it does, it tricks you because it determines or changes the braking point. It's very easy to make a mistake when you apply that method. Now, the interesting thing is for the top four guys that we've been speaking about who stopped all of them on lap 46, to get to the end of the race, you've got to do 28 laps. Our best early weekend predictions after we gathered up our data and spoke to various engineers was we reckon that the best fuel window you can achieve is 26 laps. That's six litres short of the mark. So six litres is a lot. So roughly three litres a lap used around here. So that's the roll-off, you just heard it from Craig Lowndes. So they're both doing the same thing. So Lowndes rolling off into turn nine. It's very close now to the back of Caruso. What is interesting is he continues to use first gear at turn 10. Bit of a bit of a fuel burn in that. But I think he's actually gone back again to first, has he here? So Lowndes is still pushing pretty hard now. He's in second down there. So a couple of laps earlier, we actually saw him using first gear all up, all up around the last couple of corners as well. And this is the one. Listen for it now. This is the rollout. See that there? So you don't accelerate all the way to the end of the braking area. You back it off and then try to find a new braking spot because you're going slower. You can be deeper on the brakes. So you have to find this point. Sometimes, as I said, it's a very 
tricky manoeuvre in all these areas. Going up to turn two, same thing, he just did it there. It's about trying to find a lap time achieved through different means. Absolutely. And so they're both basically found the same spot. He won't do it here. He won't do it here, although he pulled the gear early. He pulled the shift to fifth early through turn five. But the next two spots he will do it. He'll do it going up the hill. Oh, good run through there compared to Caruso. Just listen to this. Yeah, I don't think he meant to. <laughs> he grabbed it on the steering wheel. Now, if he get, wants to get by, he might use this now. He might use this roll-off to get down the inside. And Caruso knew it. That's why he moved it over. If, if Caruso rolled out of the throttle, Lounge would have stayed flat and got down the inside. This is critical strategy work now between these two guys buying for the lead of this race. And they're both reacting off each other here at the moment. So what they're doing is they're looking at the mouse game. And Caruso's looking more vulnerable right now. So Lounge steps it up. And so because Lounge steps it up, Caruso steps it up as well. They'll sacrifice a little bit of fuel to try and each one retain his position. The other one try and gain one. And if Michael didn't know that Craig was there, Craig just put the lights on. <laughs> Casey okay, so missed the point. <laughs> Showing a really cool head though, Michael Caruso. It's a trade of a Gary Rogers motorsport driver. Young, fast, but a good temperament. He'll have a new partner next year, so you know, he's going to step up in this team. It's been a good, good partnership with Lee Holdsworth. He's earning his strikes here against Lowndes. Very good job also this weekend for Rick Kelly. Two successive race meetings because we saw him grab a win. His uh, third win of 2011 when we were down at Sandown. The weather was pretty dirty, but this is great dry weather pace. And despite seeing the white of a sweep on Craig's car, no worry, there's no danger of any wet weather here at the moment. It's beautiful. And last time around, the fastest lap of the race belonged to Jamie Winkup down in 21st position. Who's at the front now? Craig Lowndes has taken the lead of this race from Michael Caruso and got himself another 12 points. This is how he did it just moments ago. Threads the needle. Caruso was trying to keep that Fujitsu Commodore as wide as he could. But that's what experience and brilliance can do. And not to mention the fact that it's Got a great, crucial 12 points. You've got a ripper run through the, the uh, chicane, the bus stop. And uh, yeah, look at that straight up the inside. Very well done. Slightest little mistake, wasn't it? Just the slightest mistake. And there's the reaction from the Vodafone guys. 
with a very important pass, a critical pass so in the 2011 Craig Lounge Championship chase. What's the, what's the gap now? It's going to be 80 points, so uh, position 21 for Jamie, giving 3,075. Position 1 for Craig, 29.95, margin 80. Uh, 150 points for a win. There it is up on screen for you. And the word also is that win couple come in this lap now for a cautionary check. He's just done that fastest lap of the race not long ago before we went to the break. But to race anybody on the racetrack, he's five laps behind Stephen Johnson. So he can't outrace anybody. If he's going to make any more, there's a, a little adjuster on the ground there. That's the and, Mark Larkham will alignment too. And uh, the only way that he's going to gain spots now is when anybody else fails. So he can sneak up as a result of somebody else's misfortune. Maybe luck I could get there and explain this will alignment. So Lance from Caruso, Rick Kelly third, continuing a good run. And Gartan is fourth, Shane Van Gisbergen is fifth, David Reynolds. Oh, Rick had it all locked up. He's gone straight ahead at 2-3. And I was about to make the remark that he's closed the gap to Caruso, so Michael might be just struggling a little bit for car balance here at this point, or he's having to lean off so much and come out of the pace to look after the fuel that Rick's half a chance to grab him. But they've really tightened up that margin, those two. Lance has already got his gap out to two seconds. And, and for Craig to control the race and control his fuel consumption, it's much better to lead and do that. You can always get a better flow going when it's just you. This is Wink up. Oh, with rubber on the fence coming out of turn seven. And he's in the lane now, so he's just about to arrive in his pit bay. There he is. Now you heard Neil Crompton just making reference to leaning them off there. What the drivers have got, which showed you before, they got the little dial on the steering wheel with four positions. Now talking to a lot of teams up and down pit lane at the moment, a lot of them are as lean as they can possibly go. Now generally what that means is taking about 8% of the fuel that the car uses. So you've got an injector on the engine that has fed fuel, it opens for a certain amount of milliseconds. So it cuts the amount of time the injector opens and lets the fuel out. Now that'll cost you somewhere around 15 to 20 horsepower. And I can tell you there is engineers up and down this pit lane chewing fingernails because when you run on that lean, you risk damaging the engine as well. Yeah, thanks for the update there, Larko. And uh, more action here. This time Craig Lowndes just sliding, two-wheeling, same for Caruso. It's still going on a big pressure at the front. The interesting thing for Wincup bringing him in and having a good look, he's got a seven-lap margin over Dunrell who's still in the lane. To the next car is five laps behind, so they can take all day long to make sure that car is safe and right. Getting back out there comfortably and just cruise around and try and get those points. The uh, other angle to discuss in relation to what you were just talking about, Mark Larkham, is that uh, last year we saw Stone Brothers in a forced circumstance having to try and push back his Burgett's car to the end on Sunday in the dry conditions to try and win, and they failed by three quarters. And that really tore up an engine for them because they had to run too much air, not enough fuel, in simple terms, that really hurt. That's why that was going on, David Reynolds came into pit lane and completed his stop, so that run at the front has now gone back to 18. It's Alex Davison and Lee Holtworth come alongside each other, and Lee gets that position done and slides for good effect up to 13. So that's uh, Jamie's tyre and uh, front right, no doubt. So it's got a slice out of it. So there's the reason why they wanted to bring it in, plug it off. He would have heard it or felt it. And uh, that's probably as a result of that little wall run that he had. Remember, we just reported that he'd done the, I think, the fastest lap of the race on lap 54, We're now on 65. So he was pushing pretty hard. So it must have been steering quite well despite the earlier dramas. A very interesting battle now with Craig Lowndes conserving fuel. Michael Caruso and Rick Kelly also in fuel consumption mode for second and third. Garth Tanner just behind them. Shane Van Gisberg and Mark Winterbottom battling for third position in this championship. This is a great motor race.
of how far we've come in season 2011, where we've been, the races that we've had. And with eight laps left of today's 250k race, one thing is sure, the championship will not be decided until the very end tomorrow afternoon. There's Mark Winterbottom in sixth spot. Oh, he was... <laughs> Scapey and I just looked at each other and our eyes looked like dinner plates because uh, I bet Mark Winterbottom stick too because that was a big moment. He's third in the championship. Michael Caruso said to just said, we're going to be extremely tight on fuel. <laughs> and they've given him a number to drive to. <laughs> I just give him 74. Lap 74, that it's is. A, it has to be in a Toyota Prius to make it home on that end. <laughs> it's, uh, it's about a coke can shy of what you need each lap to get the job done. Can't get it. That's right. It's a little pleasant to listen to a flat out. <laughs> so that's the reason that. Uh, you know, Michael started to look really vulnerable to, to Rick, and that is they just had to ease out of it in order to try and save fuel. Let's just recap for a second what happened today to our championship leader. He makes this almighty gutsy move at turn five, and then a lap later, look at this, crash. And to begin with, I, well, I wasn't sure whether they were related, but I don't believe they are. This is a, a subsequent lap and whack. But I think it's failed as a result of the curb clobbering back at 2-3, which is three, 400 metres behind where you just saw that incident. The net result is that put Wing Cup out of action, out of any chance of being part of this race in terms of securing a lot of points. He's now down in 21st position. And the guy that he's battling the championship with in true Hollywood script style is now leading this race with seven laps to go. He's going to get maximum points. He's going to take it to Sunday. There's going to be 80 points in it tomorrow afternoon. From 10th position. From 10th. From a shocker of a 10th. Exactly. Arguably, I mean, last a couple of weeks ago when we were in Sandown, we went, you know, worst qualifying ever. But it didn't take long to be able to surpass that. I think today he might have actually done that. Not numerically, because he was in the shootout. But as a demonstration, it wasn't a fight performance. And it's just bizarre. I remember leaving here last year thinking I'll never see anything like that again. I'll never see a motor race come to the most dramatic end like that again. Well, you take away the rain and I've seen it again. Well, that's right. And, you know, we're seeing what has gone on in the pit lane and the full intervention of the crew and the crew playing a role in this outcome again now for Jamie Winkup. Got, they patched him up, they brought him in several times. He's done six stops today to manage the damage. Brought him in, taped him up, fixed him up, straightened him up, used the hammer, sent him out, and away he's gone. So he's 21st at the moment. Six laps down. And uh, next bloke in the queue is Stephen Johnson. He's five laps in front of him. And the guy behind him, Paul Dumbrell, is still parked in the bottle of car. He's 12 laps. So, I mean, basically, Jamie's out there at the moment on a mission to just try and get points. So there's, there's the field. So there's Lowndes. Caruso next, just topping the rise of the roller coaster. Rick Kelly. Garth Tander, with all that damage in the front of the car, he was involved in a war early on. Started to Shane Garth Tander. Good job, wasn't it? Shane Van Gisberg, and we've seen all the drama through the day. Winterbottom looked very, very strong, but got a penalty for serving Greg Murphy. There's Tim Slade, the guy that's done a really good job, probably faster than his teammate, is James Courtney. Started 13th, now 8th. So quick little fuel update, the best I can get out of the guys on the pit lanes, as you know, they hold their cars pretty close to the chest. Lounge fans, I think you can start to rejoice, they reckon he's going to be just okay. Mick Caruso, uh, not so sure. Uh, Rick Kelly, uh, not so sure. So it's going to be tight. I reckon these guys will be rolling over the line. Seriously. That's a technical description, isn't it? Like yeah. uh, not sure. <laughs> so uh, Caruso did stop on 46, but obviously together with the other guys around him who are stopping at the same time, he's used more along the way to this point. Lowndes, Caruso, Rick Kelly, Tanda, Van Gisbergen, Winterbottom, Slade, and Courtney, who's done a good job. Michael Caruso had his best run at the first event of the year, the second race. He finished fifth at Yas Marina in Abu Dhabi. And he's on track here for his best season performance. Has he got the juice to do it? Jeremy Moore looking on. Oh. 
well, somebody's oh. gone in, didn't it? No, no, it was just the try hard, the screech and the grab and the yell. Until eight, he did, he got it, he pulled it up, but that late race in the last two years that we've been here, 09 and 2010, because it's so hard and dirty off one, we've seen a lot of people having trouble at turn eight, and very nearly saw it again. The other thing that we've really not touched on today, and it's an extremely important point, is that right now, they're feeling the physical part. This is a very, very tough event. Never ever get a chance to relax in the cockpit. It's just like the Clips of 500, as the other bookend, the beginning of the championship in Adelaide. Fortunately, they're dealing with a day that isn't quite as hot as it can sometimes be here. They will be feeling pretty second-hand at this point. Most of them will be pretty keen to get out, no doubt. But physically, this is a very challenging racetrack. And what it's like, it's more physical than probably Adelaide, is the level of concentration. The smallest mistake, you go in the fence. And, and as a consequence, it's almost like a wet race sometimes. You're actually more smashed, more physically smashed, as a consequence of that level of concentration. We've been racing now for just a little over one hour and 54 minutes. It's a long time in one of these cars. The body's response and the brain's response to the speed and the heat in the car is adrenaline, up goes the heart rate. Most of the guys will be averaging somewhere between about 160 and 190 to 200 beats per minute the whole time they're in the car. James Moffat here just trying on the wall of death at turn eight. And uh, he almost, in fact, did make contact with the all door remover. And it's, it's cost him a spot too because Todd Kelly got past him. That was the Tim Slade door remover that you saw. The gold mirror comes on. That's right. <laughs> Black hand just reaches out and off that black belt down there and plucks off the beer and takes your door skin for good measure. Like the ghost train. It scares the life out of you. And again, it's happening because we talked about the fact that this is what happened last year, late race, and it did in 2009. He just gave things up, didn't he? No, I am. He doesn't think. That's a great shot because it really shows the, the shape of those last two corners at 12 and 13 and, and how the guys basically radius the corner into one big left hand loop. 250 kilometres an hour at the bottom of the straight here for Rick Kelly under brakes now into one. We've seen a bit of drama down here. You can actually see the witness marks on the road where those have gone straight ahead. At the beginning of the day, that included Will Davis, and what a horror story for him after a terrific qualifying. Crossing Olympic Boulevard, sorry, Matt. I was just going to say, you think that we've gone through this day without any sign of any weather bothering us. I don't know if we're going to go the distance tomorrow because the weather forecast for the weekend certainly wasn't meant to be picture perfect. That's the way it's been today. So that's just something else to keep in the back of your mind tomorrow. But this is the kind of place where you don't have to sell any drama because there is drama at every turn. The top four guys, man, it's a great story. Lowndes, nine positions he's gained. Caruso, seven positions. Rick Kelly, five positions. And Garth Kander, seven positions. So the way they forged their way forward, very impressive performance from these guys that have finished the top five. Uh, yeah, make sure we get there. So it's just a reminder that yeah, it probably looks OK, but you've got such a cushion, 3.1 seconds. He can afford now to knock off the pace enormously, not be under threat because Michael's got his own field headache. There's the gap. And, uh, and make it home easily and, and not give them a nervous breakdown in the garage. Well, what you do now is 3.2 second lead. You just back it right off. A couple of laps to go. But win it by half a second. It doesn't matter. Just think it all the way down to 20th position. Carl Wright. Right? All those cars are on the red lap and it's 64 seconds covering them. So it's actually, for this style of it's endurance race, um, a lot of cars on the lead lap. Rick Kelly uh, is not going to give up this fight for another spot on the podium. Garth Tan is going with him as well. So Caruso is under attack in more like ways than one to hold on to second. He's, he's got a tank that's next to empty, if not well, virtually running on a royally rag. And Kelly and co are ready to pounce. Six drivers had tough days today. Including Dumbrell with damage to the Botolo car. Jason Bright, the oil pressure problem. Steve Allen with damage. Alberto with damage. Webb with damage. Barguana damage. And Will Davis with damage. But look, 2.3 seconds. So, Lowndes is now just rolling out of it. But have a go at Tanda. He's going the other way at the moment. He's on the attack. This could change the podium with uh, a couple of minutes remaining in this motor race. He's been on the attack since the word go. I mean, look at his car. He's tagged just about every panel there is. 
Anderson, he's having a look at Rick Kelly. Rick Kelly's having a look at Caruso. Caruso's looking oh, at the fuel gauge. In. Kelly's had to come in. No. And uh, also in fuel strike at the moment is Lee Holdsworth and uh, Richard Holway's engineer has said, mate, you have to button it right off to get this thing home. So that's a disaster for Rick Kelly. What a shame. It is, Neil, and I was just going to say, uh, Rick was in fuel trouble and Tander is not. Yeah. Well, they, they've stopped on the same lap. That's extraordinary. So 46, and they all come in. And that has put Tanda on the podium in this race right now. No, I don't reckon it's done with yet. No, it could get second. Yep. Exactly, that. Could get second because Lowndes has rolled out, but he's got a cushion. He's OK. Caruso, though, he's not OK. He doesn't have anything to respond to. Over the line. Allowance goes up through turn five. Let's get it over the line with Vapors. The message to Michael Caruso from Steve Toddkill on the radio. And uh, that might include oh. finishing third. He's gone up. He's gone up. Tanda's sweating all over the back of Michael Caruso, who'll be lucky to make it to the finish line. Gone. Tanda's got second. No worries about that. But the extraordinary thing about this day is this man, Craig Lowndes. This will be his 82nd career win. And there will be none more important than this one. Oh, oh I think it coughed. He's, he's coasting. And uh, Tander is absolutely blazing. Caruso's got big trouble. He may not make it. He's weaving the car in the background. The margin's closing down first to second. I tell you, Lowndes is only just going to get there. Lowndes comes around the final turn. He didn't win the championship today, but he saved the championship. Uh, there's not much fuel left, mate, so... Uh... Tander second, Shane Van Gisbergen third, Caruso just pops over the line in fourth. So Caruso's car literally did go across the line with Vapors, and when it caught, Van Gisbergen didn't realise that. Oh. That's a monster moment for Van Gisbergen. How did he manage to survive that? The Kiwi sneaks through on the last corner and grabs third. Championship implications for him and this man. This thing will be resolved tomorrow. That's the end of Michael Caruso's day. Just limped across the line in many ways. That collision may have given him an extra metre along the road. It might have pushed him a little bit. What an amazing turn of events. A day that started with a horror lap in the top 10 shootout ends with a victory. The most important victory at this stage of an outstanding career and Craig Lowndes now is just 80 points away from securing his fourth Australian Touring Car Championship V8 Supercar Championship title. Dean Fiore will not go anywhere. They're all running out of petrol. And a reverse, Matt, of what we saw at Bathurst in the order of Lowndes and Tanda by just 0.8 of a second at the end. What a nail biter. There'll be some stomach acid in that pit lane this afternoon. How's that for mixed emotions at Team Vodafone and Poor old Michael Caruso couldn't have done it any more. Look at the lineup here. Parked. <laughs> I reckon the Petters safety car is the only thing with any juice in it. Amazing. You don't stuff. want to lift home from any of these blokes. How was that contact with Van Gisbergen? It is. Russell's going to have to walk back. Get those old legs cranky. And Caruso, who held off Lowndes for so long, could not do it. In terms of fuel, Garth Tander on the podium after starting outside the top 10. Shane Van Gisbergen there. Remember, he ran out of fuel here last year. He knows what it's like. He gets a podium finish. And Mark Winterbottom, fifth. James Courtney there in seventh. And the Kelly brothers in ninth and tenth. Wow. Coulthard, Davison, Reynolds, good job. Lee Holtzworth started on the front row. He's 14th. Stephen Johnson, 18th, and then the back end. There's Jamie Winkup, 21st position. That means we're going the distance all the way to tomorrow. 80 points now. He came in here with a 188-point lead. He leaves today with just 80 points as a buffer and 150. And there's a lot of people in pit lane applauding because there's a lot of different stories up and down these garages. It's a slightly academic point, but... Dean Fiore may or may not be a classified a finisher. How's this for Craig Lowndes? That could have implications for Wink Cup and the points margin, but it's still going to be tight. It's still going to be all about tomorrow. 12 years it's been since he's won the title. You'd put him at long odds to leave here today to still be in the race. His teammate only had to finish in front of him. 
And if Craig won, his teammate had to finish top four. The way Jamie Wincup's been going this year, you'd back that in. Not today. Brett's. Lounsey, you came into this weekend trailing by 188 points. You now trail by 80. This game is on tomorrow. Well done. Oh, look, Brett, I think it's, uh, it's been one of those amazing days. The whole season came down to now. And uh, I guess, uh, in a sense, we delivered, but, geez, it was hard. <laughs> you got any fuel left? Um, it revs. That's all I care. It goes. Um, the boys are just telling me right lap after lap after lap just to really just look after it. Keep pushing, don't lose position, but uh, look, it's, uh, it's, it's obviously a benefit for me to obviously what Jamie had, uh, what happened to Jamie. I'm sure, no doubt, he'll be uh, upset with himself. And uh, tomorrow, as you said, it's game on and uh, it's going to be a hell of a day. Lounsey, we talked after qualifying, you're a little bit down in the dumps, but as we said then, you are a racer and this is what you love to do. You did exactly that. Uh, tremendous performance. Well, yeah, thanks, Brett. So I think the car's been sensational. I was down on myself after qualifying because I know we had a lot more in it and that was why I was down. But uh, we just had to stay out of trouble. There's a lot of carnage out there over the course of those 74 laps. But look, it's, uh, it was a hell of a race. We stayed out of trouble. We got the job done. So uh, just a big hello to Levi and Chili at home. And uh, as you said, tomorrow's another day. Have a good sleep tonight. I'll try. <laughs> good on you, Lancey. Well done. Over to Garth Tander, who came out of nowhere to grab second spot. GT, congratulations. Boy, that was fantastic. You did come from nowhere there. Yeah, we just need one more lap. So, um, <laughs> yeah, we, I mean, obviously that last thing was going to be a hard one. We had to save fuel. So we saved a lot of fuel at the start. Sort of just hung back there. And then we started coming at them, coming at them. So the guys did a fantastic job at knowing how much fuel was in the tank and what number to keep hitting every lap. And then I found a way to do that, and it worked out. So uh, pretty happy with that one. Tremendous racing, GT. Enjoy the podium. Cheers. Thanks, Bruce. Well done. And over to Shane Van Gisbergen, a tremendous effort uh, also by Shane Van Gisbergen. And Shane, a bit of a thrill coming to the line there. That was a bit tight. Yeah, Michael was doing a bit of mirror driving, as you would, and trying to keep his position or maybe get me to push him across the line. But... You know, it's good to be on the other spot from 12 months ago, so uh, yeah, great to get third and it's good points. I don't know if we got back in front of Mark, but tomorrow it's going to be on. This year has just got better and better for you. This is a great way to finish it with one more race to go. Oh, definitely. We're qualifying well and we're racing well too. We had a bit of a setback there where we got pushed around. I don't know whose fault it was, but uh, yeah, pushed back hard. The car was a bit bent, but uh, yeah, good points. All right, enjoy this moment on the podium. Let's get back into it tomorrow. Yeah, man. Thank you. Jade up, mate. I don't know what to say to you, mate, but I can see you're going to be philosophical. It ain't over yet. Um, tough day, mate, and tough track. It's hard on the cars. Yeah, hey, I've been saying it all week. It's not over till it's over, and um, great work for Lounsey. Both cars are excellent. Um, I broke a front steering, I think, same as Davo, and you guys will know more about it than I do. But um, tough track, tough on the cars. We'll, um, we'll tune her up and come out tomorrow, and if the car's as strong as it was today, we'll be, we'll be looking pretty good. Do you know the spot, Jamie? Because, mate, there was probably half a dozen or more more bent steering arms down the pit lane, so there's somewhere on the track that someone's clobbering and it's doing the damage. I think it's the uh, 234 chicane. Uh, not the track's fault, and there's no, no drama. It's just uh, we're trying to take a little bit too much and we're getting a little bit greedy. So um, I'll put my hand up for that one and I'll, uh, I'll be a little bit more conservative tomorrow. Can't wait till tomorrow. Good on you, buddy. Thanks, Lako.